Good afternoon, nerd friends, and welcome back to the Nerd Bench. There has been an update for the XR10 Pro G3 as well as the Pro G3X. It's the same update for both of the speed controls, and it applies to uh, 10 new updates that have happened. Before we get into all of that, we're going to show you how to check for updates, make sure your app's up to date, and all that fun stuff. First and foremost, make sure that your phone's operating system is up to date before you start this whole process. That can kind of mess with stuff. Um, but to make sure that your HW Link app is updated, you go into settings, then you go into about, and here you'll find the app version as well as the database version. This update comes along with database 2025-5-19. To check for the update on either of those, you just tap on it. It'll be connect if you're connected to the internet, this works. If you're not connected to the internet, it's not going to work. And it'll tell you if it's already updated. Database already the latest update as well. So you back out of here and we can get into the actual update process. Now, there are firmware updates, there are database updates, and there are more firmware updates. The Bluetooth module that's built into the LCD Program Box Pro and the OTA have their own firmware for the actual Bluetooth segment of it. That part is generally not updated very often, and it doesn't need to happen for these, but it's worth looking into it. We'll show you how to do that here as well. The other one is there's two different database updates, the one that we just showed you in the app, and the database update for the actual LCD program box itself. So if you're using the LCD program box pro with this, you're going to want to do that update first. So I have a charge battery pack connected. I'm connected to my speed control through the programming part. I fire that up. I go to the link icon. Mine is called CS LCD pro and I still use the default password of all eights. I hit enter to jump into there. It says connecting Bluetooth. And then again, we're not going to go to firmware update. That's only for speed controls. We're going to go to settings. Then we go to settings of the Bluetooth module. And here you can see the Bluetooth settings. You can change the name, which I always recommend. I just put people's names on their modules all the time so that if you're at a race, you don't get it mixed up with somebody else. I don't ever change the password, just in case. Nobody's hacking into these things anyway. But to do the firmware update of the Bluetooth module, and that's the actual Bluetooth connection, you go to the firmware screen, and it'll show you that here. This one's already up to date. If it's not, there'll be a higher number listed, and you'll tap update to update that Bluetooth module. Uh, but the database update here is the actual database that's inside of the LCD Program Box Pro to work as a standalone unit with the different speed controls. That you see here, the numbers are in fact different, so I'm gonna go ahead and update that before I get into updating the speed control so that way when I come out of that my box is ready to go. This process isn't super fast but it's not super slow. Uh, I'll let this run here for a couple seconds so you get an idea and we'll uh, fast forward to the end. Ninety nine and complete firmware upgrade successful even though it's not really firmware, that's the success menu that we get. So now that that is completed, my database update in my box for standalone operation is ready to go, and we can get into actually updating the speed control, and that is surprisingly easy. I am still connected, but if you're not, you'll reconnect. You go to firmware update, this guy pops up, it's gonna read what's in the speed control, and then it's gonna show us what's available right now. The current firmware that has been default is 6.1.00, and this new update is 6.2.07. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead, hit firmware update, and we can talk about all the things you need to worry about. Now, when you're doing firmware updates, it's always a little risky because if anything gets disconnected, you can run into some problems. So make sure that you're not getting calls. Make sure you got your screen lock disabled. Uh, make sure that you don't walk around with the phone while this is happening because you can run into a situation where you can kind of brick a speed control. Um, that being said, it is savable. Sometimes you can just start the update over again and everything comes back. Other times it won't work through the app and you'll have to bust out a Windows computer and try to bring it back using the USB link um, that way. Somehow that, that process is a little more forceful on some of these broken units. So we'll let this guy play out, and with these newer speed controls, the firmware updates are a lot quicker than they used to be. Um, they used to take several minutes, now we take maybe a minute or two at the most, so it's a nice to see the, the new Bluetooth stuff all kind of working a little faster. And 
And there you have it. And you hear the fan burping on and off, and that's a question that we get in tech support often is why doesn't the fan run all the time? That's the smart fan technology. It's not supposed to. It only runs when it needs to, so to speak. So after a firmware update, just so you know, be prepared to reset the entire speed control, ranging from your calibration of your throttle to all of your settings. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description down below that has the documentation on the, I guess you'd say the comparison charts about what has changed. A handful of things have changed with this update, um, mostly making a finer gradient of tuning. The throttle increase rate, the brake increase rate, and the turbo settings have all been enhanced to give you a little finer control. So basically what that means is that your previous throttle increase rate and brake increase rate settings aren't going to apply to this new setting. Uh, we made an offset chart to show you what that means. They're usually off by between five to six points, it kind of depends because the tables will kind of break that down for you. And it gives you a good reference to the old G2S speed controls as well, so you can kind of see how that all breaks down. The other big tuning change was with the turbo settings. You have more control over the turbo increase and decrease rates. Instead of the preset steps that were there, you now have control over the degrees and the time individually. So that's very cool. Always nice to have more tuning options and finer steps, if that makes any steps. It's because sometimes one's too many, one's not enough, that sort of thing. And this allows you to kind of fine tune all of that very nicely. And then what I think is the biggest change and a welcome return is the customizable brake frequency setting what I call variable frequency. We've had it on the throttle side, it got taken away. It was in the G2S and we had kind of fallen in love with that on the team and the engineering department removed it because they didn't know how much we loved it. So we asked them very nicely if they could bring it back and it's back. So we now have the variable brake frequency back and that's super nice for the real tricky high speed track conditions, high traction, high speed. A lot of the touring car guys really like that stuff so we brought that back. And what it allows you to do is have different brake frequencies based off the throttle position. So you can have a very high frequency for high speed so it doesn't lock them up until you bury into the brakes some more. As the car slows down, as it decels, you want a little lower frequency that gets a little grabbier um, or vice versa. If you want tons of brake up front and you need it to smooth out as you bury into the brakes, that can be done as well. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's something that can happen. You can set the front of the tr trigger position and the rear of the trigger position at different frequencies or vice versa. So let's jump in and take a look because it looks pretty much the same. The settings are are changed but the there's not new values or anything like that. There's just more steps when it comes to uh, speaking specifically to the throttle increase rate and the brake increase rate stuff. Um, but you will we'll see some differences in the turbo tuning and we'll get into that and that brake curve as well because we haven't talked about that much uh, over the years because I kind of knew these setting changes were coming, if I'm honest. But you see here, basic profile stuff is all pretty much the same. We get down here to the throttle rate control. And like I said, you're going to have the same amount of settings here. There's not no additional settings, but it is a new table. Um, so like I said, there's a link in the description down below for all that stuff. Another one that's been adjusted is the softening. They've changed that gradient as well, so you get a little finer tuning with the implementation of the implement, implementation of the softening and the sensorless mode or the transition from sensorless mode for emergencies, if you will, if your sensor wire comes undone while you're racing crash something comes loose in the car that transition is a lot smoother and the sensor list these days is pretty darn good so some folks have run without sensor wires and not really noticed so here's the new one when you get down to brake frequency you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you got the customized setting with the new easy to use chart all right so we jump into the new chart and you see you have a couple points here and there's a couple ways to maneuver here you can cycle through the preset dots with the little arrow and then you can increase or decrease those with the slider here or by individual steps if you want to you can see you get the point one so my screen really hates me sometimes but you get the idea and then you can also remove the dots if you want less points of interest by hitting the little x and it'll take those guys out and leave you with just two dots so on the brake frequency example a lot of guys when you have very high speed and quite a bit of traction, you need the front part of the brakes to be very smooth. So you run something like this with a very high starting frequency and then a very, maybe a middle to low ending frequency. So as you bury into the brakes, the frequency lowers to match the speed of the motor. The idea behind these variable frequencies is that you can make the frequency kind of go along with the speed of the motor. 
higher RPMs want a higher frequency, lower RPMs want a lower frequency. In a braking situation, you start with a high frequency, end on a low frequency, and that way the smooth brakes start at the high speed and they kind of feed in as you slow down. It may sound like I'm repeating myself because this one's a little complicated, so I, I try to say it a bunch of different ways, but we're just gonna reset this for now because I'm not gonna... And just to, because we're here, let's talk a little bit about the boost stuff. We're, we're just gonna turn some boost on so we can see, and right away it defaults to auto boost. And that is an algorithm that takes the speed controls ramping and decides when to apply the boost based off of some preset parameters. If you're worried about using boost or tuning it, auto is going to be the safest way to go. And then you have an RPM and a throttle tuning method as well. RPM allows you to set a start and finish RPM and the easiest way to reference this is run your car with no boost in it. Look at your data logs and that'll give you an, a max RPM and you can kind of use that to set a half RPM, quarter RPM range to give you a simple throttle range to set this through. And the idea is the wider the boost range is, the smoother it comes on or more gentle if you will. And if you want it all slap on real quick, you can run a real narrow RPM range. The other one is, is you can move that RPM arrange around your throttle band as well to give you different start and finish points of the boost application. And then the other one here is throttle. We'll take a look at that. And it actually gives you the start throttle percentage and the end throttle percentage. A real easy way that if you wanted to come on at a quarter throttle, you can set that to 25%. You want to finish by 75% throttle, you can set that to 75%. Super simple way to do some uh, boost tuning. Um, in the turbo section, turbo applies at full throttle. So once you get to full throttle, you have the amount of turbo that's going to be applied, and then there's a delay after the full throttle before it starts to kick in, and then the increase rate and the decrease rate is how quickly the speed control applies that. So here we have 24 degrees of turbo that'll start coming on a tenth of a second after full throttle, and it'll apply eight degrees every tenth of a second. So basically it's gonna take three, four tenths of a second after you get to full throttle, because you got one tenth delay, then eight times eight plus eight plus eight is 24, so that's three more tenths for that 24 degrees of turbo to apply in. And the decrease rate is how quickly as you let off of the throttle, it takes that away. The reason that's important is as the motor has more or less time, it has more or less brake, so this allows you to fine tune the deceleration of the motor from high speed. Generally speaking, you want these guys to be kind of close, but you want it to take away the timing fairly slowly so that you don't get a lot of decel drag brake. But if you do need some quick decel drag brake from high speed, you can make that decrease rate a little faster so it takes more of the timing away. So we jump in here, we see we have a lot more settings here now. It goes on forever and ever. 30 degree, 32 degrees and we have 0.1 second increments the whole way, so you have total control over how fast it applies your turbo setting. Makes it a little easier to fine tune your turbo for tricky track conditions. And again, to cover some more basics here, the configuration is for the data logs. It doesn't affect the performance of the speed control, but if you're running four pole motors and you want your correct RPM, you're gonna to wanna to change that. If you want your live data to show you the correct uh, miles an hour, you can set your gear ratio and your tire diameter so it does the rollout for you. And for quick data at a glance, this shows you the basic data logs at the bottom of your parameter screen. And what this is, is the mins and the maxes. Your max speed control temperature, max motor temperature, but only if you're using a hobbying motor because they're the only ones that have a temp temperature in them. Minimum battery voltage, max RPM, as well as the max current that the speed control shows. Uh, another note, the G3X model will not show current because it doesn't have a current sensor inside of it. And another one that we run into, just to make sure we say it out loud one more time, is when you make all these settings, you do have to hit save. Otherwise, nothing goes into the speed control to save that. And, of course, make all these changes. You go to run it. I didn't feel anything. Come back. It looks the same. Maybe you forgot to hit save. I know. We all think we did. But just make sure you hit save. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can email us directly, northamerica at hobbywing.com. We also do a podcast where we give away free stuff each and every episode. The name of the podcast is RC Stuff Powered by Hobby Wing. You can find it on your favorite podcast service. All you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. And as always, folks, thanks for tuning in. It's the Charlie Show right here on the Hobby Wing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time.